series of the 2021 census results. They've been released by the Office for National Statistics this morning. Now, the census, which is carried out every 10 years, asks people a lot of questions um, about themselves, their households, their home, and it gives quite a detailed snapshot of uh, society. Uh, the information is released over time. But looking at the data we've got today, well, I'm joined by Professor Jane Falkingham, who is the director of the Centre for Population Change at the University of Southampton. Thank you for joining us, uh, oh, Professor. Yes. And data like this is key for institutions like yourselves. In terms of the, 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 the population, what were your thoughts when you first saw that increase? Up 6.3%. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've been waiting for these results, uh, eagerly anticipating them. They weren't actually that much of a surprise because the Office of National Statistics gives us yearly estimates. So they take the census from 2011, then they added on the births, they took away the deaths, and then we uh, added on the migration. But what this allows us to do is, is really to then realign things. So over time, we gradually are getting further and further away from, from accurate picture. So it's really great to have these new data for 2021, which means we can now actually start to think about planning and, and really have a much clearer idea of the population in any particular area. When you say a much clearer idea, what exactly are you looking for when you're building up that picture? Yeah, so as I say, you know, uh, when we were doing the estimates, we're adding the births and the deaths, and then we're adding in migration. And of course, we're not um, at the national level, we know how many migrants there are, but at the local level, it becomes less certain because we don't have things like a population register, which they do in, in Europe, for example. So, you know, when you move house in Europe, you have to go down to the police station and tell them that you've moved. Whereas in, in England and Wales, we don't have that. So we have to rely on piecing the data together from all sorts of different places like GP registers or school registers, etc. And of course, understanding how many people you have in your local authority is actually actually very critical for planning services. Mm. For example, understanding how many schools you've got to build or understanding how much, how many old people you have for social care and all of those things. So this is really fantastic to have the, the first results from the 2021 census and I'd like to thank everyone who filled in their form. I think, uh, again, it was a, a record-breaking number of people who filled in their form and it exceeded the ONS targets. Um, so we, we are Mm. feel that it's really reliable data. Uh, Professor, uh, the, the, the data that a lot of the, the, the planning institutions mm. like you've just described, this, it's used in so many ways. They've been using data that's 10 years old, effectively, right. haven't they? <laughs> um, they have. uh, just, you know, just how, how valuable is this data to universities, to commercial companies as well? It's, it's invaluable for everybody, really. Um, I, I've talked about local authority planners, but of course, businesses, uh, it's useful for them to understand their customer uh, data, they, you know, their customer base. So everybody will be looking at this data today and thinking about um, how it affects them and how they can plan uh, their services going forward or their business going forward. Of course, uh, that's not to say our out of data date, out of date data uh, wasn't good, but this gives us a really reliable benchmark to build forward from. And because uh, the last decade, we've seen quite a lot of movement in terms of changes in migration patterns, uh, particularly uh, following the referendum. Uh, we have, um, one thing that did surprise me in a way was we've seen a slowdown in the growth of the population uh, compared to the decade before. So between 2001 and 2011, uh, we grew, I think, by around nearly 8%, whereas in this decade, we've actually slowed down and we've only grown by about 6%. And interestingly, in, in the um, calendar year 2020, we know that for the first time, uh, that the number of deaths exceeded the number of births. Okay. And so this gives us a really good picture. Mm. Sorry, I'm going into too much. No, that's detail. fine. I'm, I'm just passionate. imagining all the, the, the GIS <laughs> maps that are going to be kicked out of uh, yeah, departments. Um, very quickly, uh, what do you make of the, the new classes that will be included in this census? Um, I think it was, was it gender, um, yeah. sexual orientation as well? Yeah. I don't know if you can think of any others, but um, how, how significant are those? 
Yeah, well, we haven't seen those results yet. So mm. um, uh, we've just got come the traditional. Come out the autumn, don't they? Yeah, they come out much later in the year. But that's going to be really interesting to see the, that information. We're also going to have information on religion, on ethnicity, and of course, uh, understanding occupation as well and how occupations mm. have changed. I think the last 10 years have seen a big shift in the way we're working. So that will all be really interesting. Okay, Jane, uh, Professor Jane uh, Falking, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.